Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Joe. Brawl Star is one of my favorite mobile video games. It centers on shooting other players or, in some cases, AI enemies to bring down their health and defeat them. Players can select different characters in this menu before each battle. In this menu, each character has their own data on their screen. Playing more battles and getting more resources can be beneficial in lots of ways because you can unlock more characters. Today, I would like to share with you my workflow about hero selection menu. In this project, I recreate the Brawl Stars character selection menu and simulate the battle scenes as well. Each detailed data has been saved in different scenes. Okay, let's get into the video. Okay, we have opened up Unity. We can run our scene and look at the game view. There are Koi's UI and Diamond's UI in this game. Once we press the select button, we will move to the character selection menu. I have already prepared 18 characters in this project. Character in different levels has different maximum value. For example, level 7 character has to receive at least 3030 experience to level up. Level 3 only receives 60. Each character has their unique background history and other detailed information. By the way, you can press the next or bank button to view one of characters in this project. Once we press the level up button, your character will level up unless they are still locked yet. Press the select button and return to our main menu. Our player image will change. Then press the star button and play our game. In here, I simply create one thing for battle simulation. We can press the keyboard to control our player. If we press the reward button, we will get 500 coins, 20 diamonds, and 50 experience for this character. Let's try it and come back to our selection menu. Now we can select another character and test again. We can control another character and play a new game. This time, we want to receive more rewards because it's a nightmare game. Then press the return button. You will notice that we receive more coins and demos. Also, the experience bar has updated during gameplay. As always, you can download the project from the description below. Okay, let's talk about how to make this project. In this case, first of all, I have created several folders to organize. There are only two things in this game. The first thing is our selection menu thing. The second one is according to our battle scene. You will notice that our player and battle background image is actually 2D sprite instead of the UI image because I just want to simulate one battle in these scenes instead of the UI show. Back to our selection menu scene, all of UI elements has been set up under one UI canvas. For this to work, I create another three game objects to control. Inside Slashing Canvas, I create one vertical scroll view to display each character. There are 18 slots in this game. Each slot contains character's level, experience bar, and its profile. Move to Information Canvas group, I create several particle systems for level up effect. Let's open up Visual Studio. Inside the card class, I use script to object instead of mono behavior because we don't need to put this script onto a game object. They are used as assets, which means you can store data by using script to object. Go to cards folder. I have created 18 cards assets. Click one of card assets in this folder and take a look at the inspect window. You will see an assets to store information about this particular card. Fill in the information for each card. Try to give them some unique descriptions for your game. By the way, I used rich text, which enable HTML style tags for text formatting markup. If you are curious how it all works, don't be afraid to open all my projects on the description and see what's going on. Also, you can go to unit menu documentation for detail. Since I have given the card class the attribute, we are able to right-click within the project window and see your new card assets there as well. Alternatively, you should be able to go to Assets, Create, 
and see your new card assets on the menu. It should be located in the first grouping. So we can edit each card on Inspector, but we still need to integrate our card data with the UI. So go to Card Manager Scrape. The Card Manager game object has this scrape attached to it. All of slots has been declared as references. Since we have to integrate our card data with the UI, we created several UI type variables to hold the references to the UI components on our UI game objects. Then, I initialize one array to customize how much experience required when you want to level up your character. For this to work, I have created another several UI variables to display the detailed information in this game, includes three particle systems. Move to the top. The first public is an integer number that is called current index. This integer will track down which characters do we select. Inside star function, by default, the current index starts from zero. So the first one is our default character. Once we press the next button or bank button, the current index will increase or decrease by one. Here is our upgrade button function. Unity will invoke these public functions when you click these buttons and release it. We must use public access modifier. This function returns one boolean type variable, which helps us to determine whether this character can upgrade or not. Inside display information function, once the character is unlocked, we can integrate our card data with the UI. In other words, we can assign our current card information to the UI. Otherwise, once the character is locked, we can hide part of detailed information and keep the mystery. As I mentioned, the variable current index allows us to track down which characters do we select. Displaying experience bar looks a little complex, but once we understand how to get the maximum experience in each level, that will be easier. In here, I use transform.find methods and transform.getChild methods to achieve. There are two disadvantages. First, we cannot modify the order under this slot game object, because once we do that, the index order will mess up. The other disadvantage is taxing on computer. It's incredible expenses to your game's performance. If lets me fix again, I will try to connect the slot game object with the card assets, then save as a prefab. Go to display characters function, for loop all of slots in this game. Then set each character image and its color according to their standings. Shell page UI functions will not only tell player how many characters we currently have, also display the current UI page when you read each character information. So how do we get the total number of unlocked characters? We create one private function called getLockedCount. This function returns one integer type variable after for loop all of cards in this project. Then I have two functions called mouse enter history image and mouse exist history image. These two functions were invoked by event trigger component. Finally, I use star routine to play the particle systems. Go to UI Manager Scrape. The UI Manager Scrape only focuses on the UI such as coins, diamonds, and several UI buttons. Each time after we press the selection button on Detail Information menu, we will load the character data to our player in Game Manager Scrape. If you go back into Unity and run our thing, you will notice that the character health point is 3250 and his attack is 8170. In battle scene, our player's health is 3250, the attack is 8170. Let's go back to slash menu scenes and switch another character. This time the character health is 5900 and his attack is 4420. Let's start a new game. Inside the console window, our player's health is 5900 and attack is 4420. Cool. 
we have set game manager script as single pattern, which means we are only going to have one instance of. If another class in our project needs some methods or variables from game manager script, we can get references to it with a simple call like this. The job of my game manager is to keep track of a bunch of variables, handle the different player status, and other things that are behind the scene. This game object is set to not to destroy unloading different things. It always exists at any point in time. Here is one simple 2D player movement script. Its price depends on game manager script. Inside battle manager script, we only made one private reward button functions to simulate the winning results. And here is our fade in and fade out functions, which can make sense transitions as well. If you are curious about the fade effect, you can watch my previous episode. By the way, I saved this things fader game object as a prefab so that each things can realize the fade effect by dragging this prefab. Finally, I create one simple animation script to control the UI canvas. I use animation parameter trigger to control the animation transition. Alright, this is the end of this video, so that's just a brief overview of the Slashing Menu project. Hopefully you can see a way that will be helpful for you in your project. As always, you can download project from the description below. In the next episode, we'll have a look how to build the inventory system. I will start from a new project and cover a bunch of points in course the differences between dictionary and list. By the way, you can join our server on Discord. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, turn on the post notification, and subscribe to my channel. There's much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.